Anatomy of a Murder was directed by Otto Preminger and is based on the book by John D. Velker, the actual defense attorney of the case that this film is based off of. The film was even shot on location in the courthouse where it is said that the actual trial took place, the county courthouse in Marquette, Michigan. The movie focuses on the fictional character of Paul Beegler, played by Jimmy Stewart, a former district attorney who is called upon to take on a client who's accused of murdering the man who supposedly raped his wife. Just one problem, Beegler's client actually did kill the man and there are several witnesses to prove it. So it's up to Beegler to try and convince the courtroom that his client was temporarily insane at the time of the murder. The movie starts off slow. The first hour is basically just Beegler and his team traveling around to gather all the evidence that they can to prepare for the trial. Interviewing the client, the wife, investigating the crime scene, and so on. It's not until we finally get to the courtroom that the movie really comes alive. We see how both sides of the aisle use the evidence to their own advantages. There are moments where we believe that Stewart has gotten a victory over the prosecution, but then watch as the prosecution dashes our hopes and turns the tables on him. It works the other way around, too. There are moments where Stewart's character is backed into a corner and we watch in amazement as he's able to dig himself out. Winning an insanity case is extremely difficult, since it's tough to convince a jury that the defendant needs special care. We do see an actual jury sitting in the courtroom at times, but the true jury of the film is us. Throughout most of the movie, we are constantly questioning whose side is more right. And that leads to another reason why I like this film. There's no clear good guy or bad guy. Yes, we're supposed to root for Stewart's character, but that's just because it's Stewart. He often plays the hero. But at the same time, we understand where the men of the prosecution are coming from as well. Beegler's client, Lieutenant Mannion, played by Ben Gazzara, is a temperamental youth that easily gets himself into hot water. And in the few moments that he shares with his wife, played by Lee Remick, we notice that their relationship is more questionable than they play it out to be in the courtroom. She's flirtatious with all men, and he's a jealous hothead. So that definitely gives the prosecution something to work with. These attorneys have no beef with each other. They don't have any personal grudges. They're not out for revenge. These are just three men trying to do their jobs. And even though they're on opposing sides, they still have respect for one another. And for the most part, treat each other professionally. Even share a laugh now and again. You do it once more, I'll punch you all the way out into the middle of Lake Superior. <laughs> when Jimmy Stewart stars in a movie, very rarely is there an actor that can match up to his range. He's always the center of attention when he is in a scene. There may be a love interest that plays off of him well enough, but there is rarely another actor that can fully take the spotlight from him. This movie has one of those few exceptions. George C. Scott as prosecutor Claude Dancer. Scott has a commanding presence that easily rivals Stewart's. He instantly convinces us that his character is not one to be messed around with, and at times can be chillingly scary. Scott received his first Academy Award nomination for this film, but lost it to Hugh Griffith for Ben-Hur. However, it didn't seem to be much of a loss to Scott, who was known for publicly disapproving the idea of the Academy anyway. He wasn't even present at the ceremony where he won for Patton in 1970, making him the very first actor to ever refuse the award. Another performance that I should bring up here is Judge Weaver, played by real-life lawyer Joseph Welch, best known for his highly praised outburst at Senator Joseph McCarthy during the televised Army McCarthy hearings of 1954. Let us not assassinate this lad further, Senator. Let's, 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 You've let's, done enough. Have right. you no sense of decency, sir? This character is the kind of judge that I think every lawyer would want on their case. He's very fair, he doesn't show favoritism to either side, he's a true expert in the legal system, and Welch plays him with a unique charm. His likability even earned him the Golden Globe nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Not bad for a man whose acting career both began and ended with this film. Without giving away the full verdict of the trial, the movie's ending does feel like a letdown. 
I'm not saying whether it ends sadly or happily, but because the trial scenes were so immersive and masterfully done, it's hard to come up with an ending that tops such wonderful moments. So there you have it. A slow beginning, a weak ending, and sandwiched in between is the trial case, which is easily the true meat of the film, and the reason why the movie is considered such a classic today. The trial, thankfully, takes up most of the film's running time, which makes it easier to overlook the obvious flaws. The film is mild by today's standards, but for its time, it was seen as edgy. Never before had there been a trial case movie that focused on rape, and a lot of the words used in the film were seen as vulgar at the time. The city of Chicago banned the movie from theaters when it first came out, and it's said that Jimmy Stewart's own father was so disgusted by the film that he actually put an ad in the paper telling people not to see it. But today, the film is still considered a classic. It's also highly respected and recommended among people who study law. ABA Journal ranked the movie number four on their top 25 greatest legal movies list, and several law schools use the movie as a teaching tool in their classrooms. To me, this is just great entertainment with great rewatch value for the court scenes alone. I'm going to give Anatomy of a Murder four and a half stars. Guys, thank you so much for watching my videos. It really means a lot to me. And if you like this, you can click here and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.